Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about one of my very favorite uh, cube tanks and it's the 7.13 Aquatop High Clarity Glass Cube. And uh, it's becoming one of my very favorites for a lot of different reasons. Uh, number one, uh, the size of it is very unique and uh, the glass is so absolutely crystal clear on this aquarium. Uh, I have done some modifications to this, so what you're seeing here is not exactly what you would get um, uh, when you receive this tank, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the modifications that I've made to it and why this is such a special little tank, and we're going to do that in just a few minutes. So one of the things that makes this tank such a special tank is the actual size of it. Uh, it's a very unique size being a 7.13 gallon tank. Uh, you just don't see a lot of that. Now this is a very high clarity glass tank as well. And for the price, you're not gonna get anything that has any filtration or anything with it. Those are things that you're gonna have to add on. But as you can see, the cube is just crystal clear. Uh, the glass is second to none that I've uh, worked with, even on some of my more expensive tanks. But what I would say about this cube is what makes it so unique is that 7.13 gallons is a little bit, obviously less than a 10 gallon, but a little bit more than a five. So it sort of puts it in a unique category. And uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit today and get into the reasons why I think that uh, if you're looking for something that is a nano tank, that you can uh, uh, escape very nicely and uh, add some features to it that don't come with it, but do some modifications, you can really have a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment here. So. Let's uh, talk about some of those features and what I think uh, ultimately ends up making this cube ideal uh, in so many different ways. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the lighting on this system here. Now, this system here is a light that I used off a Aquatop Peninsula uh, out of the Pisces series, but as you can see, the one next to it is a little bit smaller square and this one here is a little bit longer because like I said it was designed for that peninsula style tank. So it does come over this Aquatop 7.13 gallon uh, very nicely and covers it very well. As you can see uh, from the inside the lighting is perfect. Now I have buffered that lighting a little bit by putting some of these strips in here. I do that as you can see on many of my tanks. This one here is just to cover the hole on this one. There's no need to do that on this particular one over here because this was designed, uh, this light was designed for this particular tank. But uh, I, I just cut out a small piece of rubber matting and laid it down there in the center. That's gonna do a couple of different things. It's gonna disperse the light because this light is a little bit more intense. Uh, it is basically a uh, white and blue lighting system, but it is a little bit more intense than uh, some of the systems that are out there. So it can create an environment where if you're using uh, low to moderate light plants, it can create a problem with some algae issues if you do not have a really well cycled tank. So one of the things that you want to do with this particular tank is find the right lighting system for it. Now, that's not always easy to do, but uh, there are a lot of different companies out there, including Aquatop, who will sell you this particular light right here. And I will put the link down below. It gives you some idea as to how much it's gonna cost you to do some of these upgrades here. Now, um, I also, at the same time, the light that came with this also came with a filtration system. I try to do this with one hand and it's not always easy to do, but uh, I'm gonna try it here and see if I can do it without uh, uh, 
creating any problems. Uh, so I'm gonna remove the lid on the top of this here, and I'm gonna show you basically, I've already opened it up just for the purposes of saving some time. I've already opened up the top of this filtration system and show you basically what you have here. Now, what they have done on most Aquatop in the Pisces series is given you this uh, internal system that basically has a spot in it for um, a small heater down in here. I have a little bit larger heater simply because uh, on the uh, 7.13 gallon, it takes a little bit more to heat this tank than it does uh, the five gallon that this was meant for. So uh, I had to take some of the filtration out of here and uh, modify that area slightly so that I could fit a little bit larger of a heater. As you can see, the heater's on. I'm not pulling it out of the water in any way that's gonna damage it, but it does set back down in there. The filtration on this is this guy right here. And uh, all it is is a simple carbon uh, filter. And if you look at the bottom here, you can see in behind there, or maybe you can't because of the lighting, but there is a small compartment in the bottom for ceramics as well. And uh, that gives this tank uh, sort of a ability to have a three-stage filtration system. Now, when I say three-phase, there is a sponge also in here, but it is tucked down in here, and I don't want to pull it out because it's going to disturb much of the tank, and I really don't want to do that. So I'm trying to be careful while I'm showing you these things uh, not to disturb the tank so much that it creates a problem. So it, it's really a unique situation. Your pump system is over here, and basically you can get about 85 gallons an hour of filtration out of this tank, which is absolutely fantastic for this size tank. And as you can see, uh, nothing is being blown around in here. Uh, I was very concerned that uh, that much uh, filtration through that pump was gonna create an environment where uh, it would be a problem. Uh, but as you can see, everything's crystal clear. There's not a bit of algae in here. Now, I've only had this tank, uh, just as a disclaimer, I've only had this tank uh, cycled for about a month, and then the fish and uh, uh, stock that are in here really have only been in here for about a week. So the impact has not been that uh, much at this point. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the other features on here, and then we'll get into talking about stock and so forth. Now, as you notice, there's these little clips along the edge that hold the glass in the top. I like this system because uh, many of these uh, have a gap in here, and you can lose fish out of the back of these uh, if you're not careful. But on this particular one, I modified the glass so that the glass fits all the way tight up against these cords back here, so the gap is very, very minimal, and the chance of losing a fish out of there, which I have not had any problems with, is is very, very small. Uh, the incidence of that happening would be, uh, you know, very, very, very insignificant as far as worrying about that. Now, as far as the heater goes in here, this is basically a heater for a beta tank that is up to five gallons. I have found, though, by testing it, in a uh, system that had 10 gallons in it that the water heats up to about 78 degrees. That's the shutoff point. And it is uh, perfect for most fish, uh, tetras, um, most of your uh, quarries and things like that are really gonna do well in an environment like this as well as any kinds of uh, um, snails like nightlife snails or mystery snails they're all going to do really well in here so we're going to talk about some of the stock in this tank in just a minute here but i wanted to sort of get that out of the way to show you the modifications that i've actually made to this tank something else i want to point out that i think is always really important i'm going to start emphasizing this a little bit more in my videos is your substrate now i use fluval stratum substrate and as you can see 
There is about, at a minimum, from the front to the back, and of course, the design is of course always front to back, front being shorter, back being much higher, is because that gives it the effect of distance and gives it that sort of look of uh, sort of depth that you're looking for. Now, the reason why I put so much substrate in here because studies have shown the more substrate that you put into a small cube tank like this, the better you're going to have a, um, a bio uh, system of good bacteria that is really, really good for this size tank. And, uh, you know, as long as you don't overstock it, you're going to do really, really well. So we're going to come back in a minute here and we're going to talk a little bit about the fish that I've chosen for this tank. And uh, you're probably going to recognize them because they were in a smaller tank. And we talked about that a few videos ago. And uh, we'll get back to that in just a minute here. So let's talk a little bit about design and stocking of this tank. And we'll uh, start with the design. Now, what I decided to do is sort of an island concept with this tank simply because of its shape. Now, as I said, seven... 0.13 gallons is not a huge area, but it's a very unique size because it does offer up some opportunities to uh, put some things in here that you might not do in a five gallon and could do in a 10 gallon, but still get away with in a seven gallon if you design it correctly. So what I have done here is sort of an island style tank. As you can see, the centerpiece of this particular tank is the piece of wood in the center and everything was sort of built out around that to sort of uh, showcase uh, that piece of wood along with the plants that are on it and around it so that it uh, has that island look that we were talking about. Now this piece of wood is really just a piece of uh, uh, I'm not even sure what kind of wood it is. Actually, it was from an old build and I looked at it and I thought, you know, it's very unique because it has a nice crack in the center of it to stuff some of these uh, plants in here. And uh, I was able to do that and uh, really, really make this a tank uh, that has that very, very special island look that I just like about cube tanks. Cube tanks sort of call out for that sort of uh, design simply because of the way they're built. They're, like I said, they're evenly, uh, as far as width, uh, depth, and height, it's all even. So it's basically, a, it's almost like a circle racetrack with squared off edges. So. It's, it's a very unique situation that you have with a 7.13 gallon tank. There's so much you can do with it that you can't do in a five gallon. If you had a five gallon cube, uh, I don't even know if they make a five gallon cube exactly, but like I said, with the clarity of the glass on this, which this is a very high uh, clarity glass, there, it's very low iron, so, uh, that in itself makes this uh, a, a very uh, beautiful tank in so many ways. If you look at how clear everything is, I haven't done a water change in here in a couple of days. I try to change the water out twice a week in this, about every three, three and a half days. Uh, I like to change the water out. I do about a third of the water, which keeps things nice. And uh, we've already talked about the filtration. We'll talk about the substrate a little bit here. What I do use is fluval stratum. And the reason why I use fluval stratum is because I think it's one of the best out there as far as being nutrient rich and giving your plants a really good, uh, be, you know, a really good start uh, when you plant them. Now, most of these plants that you see in here are in the front are repins and we do also have uh, we do have some crypts in here as well but as far as the front portion of the tank most of these are repins these are all cuts from and pieces from other plants and other tanks that I've had to trim I always save my clippings because you never know when you're going to do 
uh, another scape and you're going to want something like that. So basically what I do is I have another tank set up with substrate in it already and lighting and everything that's going to mirror the exact situation that we have here. And basically I plant those in there to get them uh, a good chance and a good start on their rooting and uh, leave them in there for several weeks to give them that opportunity. And then when you put them in the tank, like we've done here, they're ready to go and uh, they've got a really, really good start. Now, the crypts that are in here, I don't have the name of these because these were basically shoots off of another crypt that a friend of mine had in his tank. And uh, whenever you're getting plants from someone's tank, make sure that you do exactly what I talked about, and that is don't put them in substrate at first if you're getting them from someone else. Now these repins, like I said, they came from tanks of mine. I know that they're healthy, they're snail free, uh, they're, there's no ick or anything on you know these plants that could be hiding in there. But basically, when you are getting uh, shoots from someone else's plants that they're giving you, I try to put them in a tank at about uh, 82 to 86 degrees, a uh, tank that has no substrate in it whatsoever. Let their roots just hang down and make sure that there are no ick situations or anything like that or snails or anything that you may not want to add to your tank mistakenly and just be really careful about that but uh, these crypts won't get very tall they'll get to be oh maybe halfway up the tank and you can of course trim them back a little bit uh, some of the taller leaves as they grow cut them back that stimulates a thicker more bushier crypt and uh, that's that's fantastic to do uh, because it really gives you an opportunity to uh, use those cuttings as well to start new plants or if uh, the crypts get really big you can actually pull them out and divide them a little bit and that gives you an opportunity to use them as well now as far as uh, the back of the plants or the back plants excuse me all I really have back here is a few more of these crypts. I do have right in behind the centerpiece, which happens to be this piece of wood, is some ferns in there. And I don't know what kind of ferns they are, to be honest with you, but uh, I think that, uh, well, I'm not going to say it because I will leave that information at the bottom after I make the video here. Um, I'm just sort of having a brain uh, whatever right now, so I don't remember the exact name of those ferns, and we're not gonna sit here and try to figure that out while we're talking. But as you go to the very far part of the tank, you're gonna see some Amazonian swords back there. There's one on each side, and one is a little bit taller than the other. Um, that just happened to be, you know, like I said, I harvested these from another scape that I had so most of what you see in this tank has been taken from other tanks and I really didn't put a lot of money into building this I had pretty much all of it except for the substrate which I recommend if you're going to do uh, a new build uh, grab as much as you can of the substrate from an old build that has that good bacteria that you need to uh, immediately cycle your tank but at the same time, leave enough, as you saw in the uh, first part of this, uh, or the second segment of this video, how this goes from front to back, taller, to give it that sense of depth. Uh, make sure that when you're putting other substrate in here from another build, that it's a good healthy tank, number one, that's been running for a long time and you know that there are no diseases. It loves hiding out in substrate and uh, that's where you're gonna have problems if you're gonna have them also quarantine your fish make sure that whatever fish you're putting in that tank they've been quarantined these serpe tetras have been with me for several months they've been in a, um, a hospital tank or I should say just a quarantine tank because it is a fully scaped tank and I've had no problems with them at all I have seen however where you can take a fish from one environment 
uh, and put it in another and all of a sudden it shows up. So it does tell us one thing that we believe uh, in many of us do in the hobby that ick is always present in a tank it is the condition of the fish that determines whether or not that ick is going to have a breakout if your fish are really healthy they're not going to have any problem if they've got a good slime coat on them and they're just really healthy fish as far as their diet and things like that you're really not going to have any problems now uh, as I said, uh, the stock in this tank are Serpe Tetras. They're the long fin, fancy fin ones, which I really think are a beautiful fish. We have kind of an unusual one. I've talked about this in other videos. We have one that is almost pure white, and I have no idea. That's just a gene uh, <laughs> sort of misfit, uh, but he's kind of cool looking, you know. Uh, I don't know. I can't see him right now out and about but uh, typically during a feeding you'll see him come out he kind of likes to hang out in the back of the tank but uh, just a really pretty little fish even though he doesn't have the red he does have a little bit of red around his tail area and of course he has the black fins uh, just like the other surveys in here do now you're going to see a little sparring i've got two males and uh three or yeah, two males and four females in here, so or five females in here, because we have a total of seven, and uh, that's a really good balance. Every once in a while, you're going to see a little sparring going on with the males in this uh, particular breed, but uh, for the most part, they're a pretty docile uh, bunch of fish. They do hang out typically together. They do school and uh, so they're a great little uh, fish for this particular size tank i would not put any more than seven in here it's like uh, you know an inch and a half of fish per gallon is what i go by a lot of people say an inch per gallon i don't believe that that's a rule that you absolutely have to do because i i screw around with that rule all the time and i've never ever had a problem now, as far as putting any other fish in here that are going to be schoolers or anything that is going to uh, require swimming space or whatever, you don't want to do that. You've sort of maxed it out with the seven fish that you have already. But as far as bottom fish go, I have in here four Julie quarries, which I think are a great addition to this tank because as you know, quarries are great cleanup fish. They go around the bottom and they really take care of things as far as keeping uh, your tank clean on the bottom. Nothing goes to waste with these guys. Uh, those barbells on the side of their mouth are constantly working over uh, the substrate to find any food that got missed by the fish. and. Uh, uh, they really do a great job. Also, I have in here is some snails, some nearite snails, and I have some mystery snails in here. I'm not seeing any of them right now, but they are in here, I can assure you. I just have not had the opportunity uh, to be able to show them to you because they've been kind of hiding since I started this video. So, but they're in here. Uh, I would not put any shrimp in here because I think shrimp are not going to do well with the Serpe Tetras, uh, especially if they're small. They're just going to become an expensive meal and you don't need that. Um, as far as uh, algae eaters, I have one albino dwarf pleco in here and he's right in here behind this rock. Unfortunately with the camera, you can't see that, but he is in there. And I've had him for a while. He's only about this big, and he's not going to get much bigger than that. So it's an ideal fish for keeping leaves clean. Uh, it's ideal for keeping the wood clean and the rocks clean. Uh, I may, as I go along here, add a couple of auto sink lids or something in here, but I don't want to overload the bio system on this. So I'm going to kind of do a wait and see on whether or not that's something that I think is something I should do later on. But as far as stock goes, that's really it. Um, as far as uh, plants go, uh, Anubius is uh, the main plant in the center part of this tank, and it's Anubius uh, Nana. 
which is a great plant uh, for moderate or low light and I think it really works well you know coming off uh, the uh, uh, the uh, wood that's in here there was a nice split in that wood which made it really ideal uh, to stuff the root system down in there and I guarantee if you've got a healthy tank within a couple of weeks to a month those are going to be so wrapped around that that root uh, system is going to be so wrapped around that tree stump in there or a piece of wood uh, the stump portion of it that it's absolutely going to be uh, almost impossible to get those off there but that's what we want we want these things to be natural we want the roots to really take hold that's a sign of a good healthy plant so really that is it really as far as talking about the stocking and the design of this as I said I did an island style design simply because I wanted that racetrack sort of feeling that you would get so that these fish can move around this tank and have more room than they would in a uh, say a 10 gallon that uh, is uh, long but has that peninsula end to it that really cuts off a lot of your space and uh, makes it look kind of cramped and uh, so I, I really like this design I hope you do too uh, I'm going to kind of end the video there. Please hit that uh, subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Please hit that comment button. I love the comments. They tell me a lot about what you're thinking. If you think that there's something about this design, something about this tank that I didn't cover that you have a question about, or simply if you don't like something that I said or you don't agree with me on something, I want to hear that too because that helps me to be a better designer in the hobby. It helps me to be better at, at uh, designing the tank and uh, making sure that I'm not making mistakes that are gonna cause me problems later on. Now I've been doing this for a long time so I kinda know where I can push it and where I can't, but the comments are really important to me so please leave those comments. Hit the bell up, I guess it's in this side over here so that whenever I have a new video coming out, you know about that, and uh, uh, that gives you an opportunity to see what uh, I have coming up in the future. I've got a lot of great content coming up here. Uh, unfortunately, the COVID uh, situation has put a damper on so many things, unfortunately, for all of us, and I know that, but uh, we're gonna get out of this, and we're gonna get out of it together. Uh, do that social distancing, wear those masks whenever you can. It's a short-term sacrifice for the long-term benefits of being healthy. So, especially if you're older, I'm 62 years old almost, and I know you wouldn't know that by looking at me, and people are just like, yeah, you can't possibly be 62. Well, I am. And, uh, well, I will be shortly anyway, within a few months, but uh, yeah. You know, remember that uh, if you're a younger person in this hobby uh, and you're watching, to remember that whatever you do, you're taking that home to your family and your friends, especially if they're elderly or older and they've got problems. I'm very healthy, but it doesn't mean that I couldn't have a lot of problems. I don't want to get into a big COVID-19 uh, lecture here, but I did want to bring that up because I think it's so important. Uh, that we are patient about this. I know there's a lot of uh, us who are in this hobby. You can't get things. You can't go to your fish store and find what you want because many of their suppliers are just not able to get the product to them. But it's like I said, it's a short-term situation uh, that has a long-term benefit to us just being a little bit more patient so that we can get out of this and uh, get back to enjoying life a little bit. Anyways, I've really enjoyed talking to you today. I'm going to end the video there. Again, subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends about the channel. That's, I really have seen a big growth in my channel over the last couple of months and I really appreciate that. I do have a couple of uh, uh, sponsors that I'm working with and hopefully that's going to be something that's uh, going to be beneficial to the channel and help you guys to to bring out some great products uh, 
that I think are going to help you. Anyways, George with The Art of Water, thank you so much for visiting with me today, and we'll talk again soon.
Thank you. 